Welcome to Facebook for Economic Development. With more than 600 million users, Facebook is by far the largest social network. But what does that mean for today's economic development organizations? You'll learn the answers next. We are fortunate to have two of the leading experts in the use of social media for economic development speaking today. Ryan Shell is the Director of Social and Digital Media at DCI. From working with Fortune 500 companies to designing digital marketing programs for DCI's economic development and tourism clients, Ryan has extensive online and offline marketing experience. True nerd at heart, you might say Ryan is plugged in digitally and likes to push the boundaries of new technology to see how they can be most impactful. And there's that random run for political office in 2009, but that's an entirely different story. Anatalia Ubalde is CEO of GIS Planning Inc., an economic development internet service company, and ZoomProspector.com, an online site selection service. His company's strategies are currently implemented in 43 states and serve the majority of 100 largest cities in the USA. GIS Planning's Zoom Prospector web-based GIS product is the industry standard for site selection websites in economic development. Mr. Ubalde's work has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Business Week, Fortune, and the New York Times. Now I'll turn it over to the people we've been waiting to hear from. Thanks. Well, to give this a little bit of context before we talk about Facebook, I wanted to talk about how there are new ways that we can reach our targets in economic development. Historically, economic development organizations have targeted two groups two different ways. They've been reaching the most powerful influencers, CEOs, and presidents of companies through traditional public relations. They want to be in the Wall Street Journal where these executives are reading about business. The other option for, for economic development organizations that are well-funded, and there, there aren't a lot of those anymore, is they've put huge advertising budgets to reach the mass population at the bottom of this pyramid. What I talk about in my book, Economic Development Online, is that the new opportunity is in what I call the magic middle. And that is through blogs, podcasts, social networks, and other online strategies to reach the people who influence the final decision makers. These include people like thought leaders, opinion makers, people who are talking about the community, and domain experts as they shape opinions about your communities and doing business in your areas, they influence the final decision makers, including CEOs or CFOs, COOs, or presidents. Ryan, why don't you give us the state of Facebook? So what we'll do now is talk about the state of Facebook. And the next few slides are really going to give you a clear understanding and a look of how people are using Facebook and how it's compared to a couple other social networks. Um, specifically, on the next slide, you'll see that LinkedIn, at the time this slide was done, had 85 million users. Twitter had, you know, continues to go, grow at a pretty fast pace at 175 million. And then Facebook, when this was done, at 500 million users. And believe it or not, they've actually grown more and, and have now topped the 600 million mark. So it's just, a, you know, a tremendous size network. Um, as of 2011, at the beginning of the year, the stat from this, uh, this graphic was 500 million was used. Um, and we'll go to the next slide here. And it says, of the 500 million users when this image was made, one in every 13 people on Earth would be on Facebook and be logged in at any given day. Uh, so just a, you know, a tremendous number. The next slide will show you, sticking with the 500 million number, you know, it, it, granted we have now grown, but this just shows in, in 2004, you know, Facebook had just started out. 2008, it's getting a little bigger. This is when I think they started going away from just colleges. 2009, they, you know, they grew, and in 2010, I think it would be safe to say that Facebook flat out exploded, um, and everyone, and literally their grandmother started using it. Um, the next slide shows, it kind of does away with the thought that, you know, Facebook and social media thing is just for kids. The 35-plus demographic now represents more than 30% of the entire user base, and I kid you not when I say grandmothers, because my grandmother has tried to friend me on Facebook. Um, the next slide there are, says there are 206.2 million Internet users in the U.S., which means 71.2% of the entire U.S. web audience is on Facebook. So it's just, again, the, the numbers are, are quite mind-blowing. Um, the next slide points out, this is good from a content generation standpoint, that 48% of young Americans said they find out about news 
through Facebook. So when people say, you know, I get up in the morning, I check email, and I look at Facebook, yeah, they see what friends are doing, but they're also getting news updates from, you know, the likes of the New York Times, uh, local web, uh, newspaper and TV organizations, or uh, outlets and things of that nature. Uh, there was a study done not too long ago that there was a couple interesting quotes worth pointing out. Um, this first one highlights that an overwhelming number of marketers consider social media to be an integral to their strategies this year. Of those, 70% plan to increase their social media budgets by more than 10%. So when you're dealing with budgets, you know, a 10% increase is pretty drastic, which gives us a lot of weight. The next slide points out that 87% of people in, in that study said social media was important or very important to achieving their biggest marketing goal this year. Um, one thing we did prior to the webinar was we took a look at some of the attendees that were taking part, um, and you can go ahead and move to the next slide, there you go, some of the attendees that we're going to be on, and we looked at their Facebook pages, uh, or their pages and, and noticed that there were some that were still on profiles, and there were, some had pages, and there was some confusion. So this, this graphic says, are you asking people to friend your business? Um, and that would actually be an incorrect statement, uh, as the next slide shows that people have profiles and businesses have pages. So if your economic development organization has a profile, you're going to want to convert that to a page uh, at some point down the road because it's just not right. Again, people have profiles, businesses have pages. And for the next two slides, we'll take a quick look at that. Um, not to be overly confusing, but profiles and pages now virtually look almost the same. This is on Atalio's uh, personal profile page. Our, our, that's going to confuse people. This is Atalio's personal profile, not to be confused with a page. But are those your, is that your new baby up top? It is. Very cute. So again, people friend profiles. Um, they also have a lot less functionality than a what you might call a brand page or a typical Facebook page. Um, profiles are still going to have you know your wall post and information, and you can do uh, post photos and share notes and things. But what you don't have is, is some of the more advanced features that we'll highlight on the next slide. Uh, this is the Charlotte Regional Partnerships page, um, and you'll notice it looks very similar. Um, but you're going to have some extended opportunities to do things. For example, if uh, this page hadn't been liked, what you'll see. Uh, you could have custom landing tabs. There's analytics on the back end side, uh, and just some added functions that I think for any organization that's going to be on Facebook you, you are going to be important to you, and you're going to want to make sure you have a page. And quickly, Anatoly, why don't you just kind of share the process of making an actual page? It actually only takes a few minutes to to create a Facebook page for your economic development organization. We're not going to go through every step but just show you where to start the process. If you go to the Facebook home page, you'll see below where it asks you to sign up for a profile, there's a link that says create a page for a celebrity band or business. And economic development organizations, we would fall under business. So you just click on that link, it takes a couple minutes and your page will, will be, uh, you know, be started. Here are some of the elements of a Facebook page. And we'll, I'll show you those now. This is the, uh, the Facebook page for the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber. And you can see up at the top they have an organization logo. If you click on this link, uh, you can get other information about the organization, including their contact information. You can see there's 370 people who like the organization. And this is the button that you click on to like or become a fan of their organization. Um, so here you can see um, these are the links, and these used to be called tabs, and so people sometimes still call them tabs because they used to uh, have a different format. But these are links to additional information about their organization. And this is their wall, just like you as individuals have a have a wall on your profile, there's also a wall for organizations. These are some examples of uh, Facebook page wall posts. Going back to the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber, here they're inviting people, they're saying, hey, don't, you know, don't forget kids, there's an event tonight from 4 to 6, uh, come for networking. Here's another post that is inviting people um, inviting discussion. They're saying, what retail does Oklahoma City need? 
And you know, and from, a content, from a content perspective, it's really good to ask questions like that because it prompts people to respond that have liked the page. Exactly. This is uh, where they're inviting people to a trade mission to China. And you also see that, they, that somebody who's interested in, in attending can add the event directly to their personal calendar by, by clicking on a link. The Laramie EDC, they use their wall to post an available job. So if they're, if they're looking to recruit uh, the, um, the office manager position, they just posted that. And here's, here's a great case where Tracy posted saying, you know, we really appreciate the recognition in the Laramie EDC uh, in this newsletter. So they're thanking, they're publicly thanking the EDC for the work that they're doing. And down here, they're, they're sharing positive news stories such as how Wyoming ranks third in business tax-friendly climate. These are all examples of things that you can do as economic development organizations. This is the Lincoln Economic Development Association, and here you can see that they posted photos of activities they were involved with. Um, and Vicki Rogers asked, well, what are business missions, and, and what do you economic developers do? And that gives the economic development professionals like you an opportunity to respond back and educate your constituency about the work that you're doing so you can develop uh, more fans. And I don't mean fans just in the sense of being Facebook fans, but I mean fans in your community that are supportive of your organization and the economic development work you do. Here they posted a video of the Apple Data Center. You can also add links, which I talked about earlier, for more information. This is an example how the, uh, the Greater Oklahoma City Chamber added video, and if you click on any of these videos, it will show you the video within Facebook. One uh, looks like popcorn at a network trade show. You can also add photos about things, uh, photos that you've taken of, of activities or projects or, or trips that you've gone on, or in this case you can see down in the, in the left-hand corner of a ribbon cutting ceremony. So these are the photos that have been posted by their organization, but other people can post photos and, and tag them with your organization. So here you can see these were, these were posted by, by people um, that, were, that had relevant photos about the City of Danville Office of Economic Development. You can also post events. So um, if you wanted to attend the Energy Retrofit Forum, that's something that people can add to their calendars and know about it by searching on your Facebook page. You can also add a, a blog or through RSS to your, to your Facebook page. This is an app so that you can see, for example, that Twin Falls Based Company wins a National Sausage Award. And uh, you can integrate this with RSS. And anybody who is on Facebook can subscribe to news from the Idaho Department of Commerce just by clicking there. I must fully admit that I had no idea there was a National Sausage Award. <laughs> See, and now you know. So, so clearly it's working for Idaho. This is an example that the Anchorage Economic Development Corporation uses to, uh, to be able to connect and communicate with more people. So, this, so what you really want is you want the permission of businesses and your, your constituents for you to continue the conversation with them. And this is a way where people opt in to receive the e-news bulletin from Anchorage. You might not have thought about this one, but Saginaw Future actually has a link to music. And there is a, uh, an enables the download of economic development music. In this case, the title is By Michigan. And this is an app that's powered by, uh, you can see at the bottom, powered by music. So this is something you can add to your Facebook page. One of the things that we, uh, we thought about at JS Planning was, well, why isn't there a Facebook app specifically designed for economic development? And we realized that it was important enough that we should build it. So now, if you are in whatever city or county you are in the United States, you can add demographics for your community directly onto your Facebook page. And this is an example with the Greater Oklahoma City. They added their own banner at the top, 
and then all of this demographic data is data that comes from zoomprospector.com. Another, oh, I'm sorry, and you can also download this Facebook app at facebook.com slash zoomprospector. It's pretty easy to install, right? It's, it's very, I mean, literally it only just takes a couple of minutes. Okay. Uh, I think probably the most complicated thing is you just have to find your, your graphic or logo. If, if it's sitting on your desktop, that's, you just add it and you're done. Gotcha. Another thing you can do, uh, depending on where you're located in the country, is you can add property search to your Facebook page. This is an example of Blackford County Economic Development, and they enable businesses to search for available uh, commercial properties within their Facebook page. This is another application designed specifically for economic development that you can download at facebook.com slash zoomprospector. And then the last example that I'll show you is uh, Martin County used their Facebook page to, as, as a letter basically thanking the people who helped them with a tax abatement referendum. So there are many ways that you can communicate and post on your, on your Facebook page to engage businesses, both locally and, and uh, outside of your community. Turn over to Ryan. Why don't you talk about some, some of the best practices? Well, so um, just to talk about some best practices that were noticed when we observed the Facebook pages of people that had registered for this webinar. Um, you have to disconnect Facebook and Twitter. And what that means is organizations that are using both will sometimes connect the two so that if you do an update from Twitter, it automatically will update Facebook. That's bad for a couple reasons. First of which we'll say this uh, is an example of an update that was on Facebook that was pushed from Twitter. So what happens is you, you see this update and there's a link. And Facebook users would then have to click that link. It's not really visually appealing. Um, what that link contained is on the next slide. And it's just this image. So what would happen is if you uploaded this image directly to Facebook, there could be a longer caption that was more than 140 characters. And then there would also be the visual appeal to the people that have liked your page. And not only is it important from a visual standpoint, but Facebook has an algorithm, and this is more Anatolio's you know, area than, than, than mine, but it, they have this algorithm that basically determines what is shown within the, the Facebook news feed. This is the feed that people see when you first lo uh, log on and you see the statuses of all your friends and whatnot. Image or post or status updates that have images and videos are weighted higher than just text updates. So you're going to want to include the images, and it's just going to get you a little, a little more leverage on Facebook. So that'll be the first best practice. And then moving on to the next slide, uh, this is a pretty simple one that not everyone on the call has done. You're going to want to claim a vanity URL. And what that means is instead of telling someone that you know, you're on Facebook, go search for us, or saying our address is facebook.com forward slash 239RQVC and so on, It'll be facebook.com forward slash, for example, about DCI, which is DCI's Facebook page. Um, pretty simple to do. Next off, this is, I, I'm pretty big on this one. Um, when people first go to your Facebook page, you really want to customize the experience. If you, so we're going to talk about creating a custom landing page. If you don't have a custom landing page, what happens when someone goes to your Facebook page? They could be dumped right on the wall. There's no messages. Um, it, there could be things that you've posted, but you're, you're not really holding their hand and saying, hey, we want you to like our page. So this is an example of the, the Charlotte Chamber. This is a really great graphic that they came up with saying, hey, we're awesome. And then other cool reasons at the bottom to like the Facebook page. So what will happen on this page, when you click like at the top, it's going to immediately take you to another custom uh, landing page on Facebook where you're going to have the option to, you can change slides there. When you click like, the next page that will pop up is the, another tab that's saying, hey, you can sign up for our, in, our email newsletter. So it's a, a great two examples of how these custom tabs can be used. Um, on the next slide, we've got a great example from Georgia Department of Economic Development. This is another custom landing tab. You'll see they've got the graphic at the top, three things to know about Georgia business down on the right side. And the box that's all black is actually a YouTube video that they've embedded. Um, so that's kind of neat to, and just shows you the various elements that could be included in the Facebook landing page. Um, something that might be new to some folks that have even been on Facebook for quite some time and been using it from an, an ED standpoint 
is using it for research. Um, Facebook Questions is a product that they just rolled out, I would say within the last month and a half at the latest. So what you can do is you can literally ask people that have liked your, your page a question. So if you have thousands of people that have liked your page, you're really going to get some good feedback. Um, so on the next screen, I think we have an example of how Sioux Falls, they just asked a quick question about uh, Chamber News and their audience could immediately give feedback and they instantly you know, had the pulse of the situation. I mean, I think this is really a terrific way to engage your, your constituents and even folks that you don't know who may have an interest in your organization. I, I mean, the promise of the Internet is real-time feedback and one-on-one and -on -one relationships, and this, this really delivers on that. Right. Moving on, we'll do, uh, talk about f promoting your community surveys with Facebook ads. I'm sure, I, I would say everyone on the call has been involved with some type of survey that you've done for the organization or the community. And from what I've seen a lot of times is these surveys will be plopped on a website and maybe promoted in a newspaper or whatnot. And they, you know, the results that I've seen aren't astounding. So what we could do is socialize the surveys by using Facebook advertising. And the next few slides, what we're going to do is just show you what the Facebook advertising looks, looks like. You can go back one slide, sorry. So at the top here, this talks about designing your ad. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory. If you have a page in the destination up at the top where it says Ryan Shell page, that's where your organization's name would show up. And you can go down and just select from the various categories. And you can make your ad right here on this page and upload an image. And when you do so, in the right sidebar, um, when you're making the ad, it's going to pop up and you'll, you'll see a live preview. Um, on the next slide, we just use Charlotte as a targeted example. So if you have a survey of some sort that's for a specific city, let's just say Charlotte, there are various demographics by state. Then you can do within you know, how many miles of the state. I put in just for the heck of it, ages 25 to 54. You could do men, women. Um, and, and you can continue to drill it down a little bit. And for this example, it came up with 800,000 people um, could potentially be in this audience. And then the final slide for this just highlights the, the pricing and scheduling and things of that nature. Um, everyone has budgets these days, so you could say, all right, I want to spend $10 a day on this survey. So you can set your budget, and you are only going to pay for when people click um, on the ad. If under pricing you, you click pay for clicks. That's typically what you always want to do on Facebook. So anytime someone clicks your ad and then they potentially go to take the survey, that's when you would have to pay. But I think that's a pretty neat example how to get more leverage out of a social network like Facebook. And you know, it, it's just not really that great when you have a very small sample size for surveys and things of that nature. But that'll wrap that up. And Anatolio, you pick up the next slide. I wanted to sh share with all of you, because I've been asking economic developers about their experience using Facebook. And I, I sat down, I was having a meal uh, with an economic developer at a, at a conference, and I, I, he w had such strong feelings, like economic developers should never use Facebook for, for business. You know, Facebook, in his view, is for personal, just for friends and things like that. And he said, and I said, so you, so you've never actually, uh, you're not connected to anybody that you do business with. He says, oh no, actually, I'm, I'm connected to lots of people I do business with on Facebook. I'm friends with many site selectors and corporate real estate professionals, and I, I, you know, I see on my wall what they're up to. I, I comment on pictures of their kids and their vacations and what they're doing. And uh, I said, and, and how has that affected your relationship with? with these people. And he says, oh, they pick up the phone every time that I call them. Um, the, I get uh, requests for proposals from them all the time. There have been a number of deals that have happened in, in my community. But none of it was related to Facebook. And I, I sat there scratching my head because here's a guy who is very effectively using Facebook for engaging the people that he wants to have relationships with. And it's resulting in him being able to easily call them. They answer his calls. He's able to promote his community to them. He's had deals done in his community. Isn't that but, just funny, though? 
I mean, but but I mean, like, so if I did, if we did a survey and we asked this guy, you know, do you use Facebook for economic development? He'd say absolutely not. But in fact, he's using it exactly the right. I mean, in exactly in an effective way to do that. So I mean, from from the relationship standpoint, you can't say enough about that. Um, I, I saw it, we kind of touched on this with that uh, the first pyramid slide. But there's some people I, I've noticed that will think when you're talking about economic development, they automatically think it's only the CEO of the Fortune 500 business. And forget that you know, there are existing organizations and businesses in the community that can use an, an ED organization services and things that could be promoted within Facebook. Another very valid point that I think should, people should think about is there's going to be a day that Facebook is very well connected to the search engine. It's just going to happen because of scale. Facebook, I, I saw a stat the other day, I think it's already the second or third most used search engine um, or something of that nature. I don't have the exact stat, but it's, it's very large. So what that means is when people are Googling or, or do we say binging, um, when people are using the search engine and they're searching for Charlotte economic development, there's going to be a time when you know, Facebook searches could come up. Um, so it's just very important that organizations be involved in sharing the right information. I, I I couldn't agree more. So with that, I um, I'm going to turn it back over um, for question and answers. The first question is: Do you use FBML for your page? If so, how? Any suggestions? The custom landing tabs, um, like for Charlotte, the Charlotte Chamber, that's used uh, with FBML, um, and you literally within the Facebook page you can add apps and you will search for FBML and there's a pretty easy process where you add the app to your page and for it's Facebook markup language is what FBML stands for and that basically allows you to insert HTML code to the Facebook page. I think that what it does is it really provides economic development organizations the ability to customize their page make them stand out from just a typical you know typical wall page Okay, next question. Likes are very low. What's typical for economic development organizations? I think it's a mixed bag of nuts. I mean, you could, just through the pages that we highlighted, I remember I saw one page with 300 likes. I saw the Charlotte Chamber with, I, I think, 1,300. And that's fundamentally, and Anatoly, maybe you have a different opinion, but I think it's fundamentally about how much organizations are from promoting their Facebook page. I mean, you could go to some ED orgs page or websites and you know, you're going to have to look for a microcosm of a graphic at the very bottom left-hand corner to see that they're on Facebook. So if you're not promoting it, the likes aren't going to go up. But you do have to actively market it and, and realize that a tool such as Facebook is part of your marketing toolbox. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, the results you're going to get is, is, is likely based on what you put into it. If businesses, if residents don't know about your Facebook page, how how can they like you? Uh, it, it can be as simple as adding. So, for example, you're, you know, you're looking at a screen right now, and we're, both of us are telling you that we have Facebook pages. There's one at facebook.com slash Zoom Prospector, and there's another one at facebook.com slash About DCI. You could add that to the you know, email signatures just to let folks know that it's there. But you also want to give them a reason to like you and you know, share good news engage them. And that, you know, that goes back to the, um, I don't want to keep mentioning Charlotte, but the, the landing tab. When people are going there, you really have to say, hey, we want you to like us, and this is why we want you to like us. And then when it comes time to the content, you really have to humanize, if you will, the content and, and realize that you're not talking to hundreds of thousands of people. I want whatever Facebook page, I want them to talk directly to me, and I want them to, to post interesting content. Don't use you know, social media anything is just another place to put news updates because that's just really going to bore people. So if you post interesting content that is actually usable, what's going to happen is people are going to comment on it, they're going to like it, and what that will do is share it in their news stream, further pr and which further promotes your Facebook page. One way if you want to get more people to, to like your page is to give them something that's worth liking. Tell them something that they didn't know about your community. Share something that, that's good news so they can say, yeah, I like that. And then as that shows up uh, other places, there will be other people that may be interested in, in liking your page and following, 
what you're talking about. All right, the next question. Is it possible for multiple employees to update the Facebook page? Yes. The uh, Facebook previously didn't have this functionality from an admin standpoint, um, and you had to make various people admins, and, and now you, well, you can, and now people can log in and actually use um, Facebook as the page. Does that, does that make sense? Do you follow what I said, mm -hmm. Anatolio? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that answered the question. The next question. The EDOs shown as examples, do they have staff who um, are specifically assigned these duties to update the Facebook pages? I'm a one-person EDO. Who has the time to do all this? You know, I'm, I'm on the agency side, so I've, I've had contact and seen a lot of different um, ED organizations, and whoever asked that question has a very valid point. You have some organizations that will be a, a team of one. Then you'll have organizations that are a team of many. And I really think it comes down to the, the size of the organization and the budget. I mean, if you're a organization of one, the likelihood, just being frank here, is that you're not going to have the budget to seek outside help. Um, and, and quite frankly, even for an organization, let's say they have an ample, healthy budget and they've got 20 people on the ED staff, it, you, there has to come a point in time where you say, should we have outside help that can do this? individuals that could, could do what we can do on Facebook, and they can help us tell our story online, and they could be spending that time doing something else. And I think that's something that, that organizations really have to consider in figuring out you know, when to, to outsource things. Yeah, I also think that this becomes an issue of, of prioritizing. It's only taking too much time if it's not delivering results. There's many things that we do as economic development professionals, and some of them are more effective and less effective than others. We can't do everything. We as human beings aren't scalable, so we have to decide where we put our time. It's also perfectly okay to do less. I encourage everybody to experiment and find out how much success they're having with social media and with Facebook. Because if you're getting great results, you're going to put in more time. And if you need help, you're going to hire experts, outside experts, to help you with that. And the next question, is it true that nonprofit organizations can't have a landing page? No. Yeah, I've never heard of that. I, uh, I mean, many of the economic development organizations that we showed as examples are nonprofits. You're fine having a page. I'll stick with the answer being no. <laughs> Question. Regarding demographics, can an existing Excel spreadsheet be imported? Ryan, I don't, I, do you know of any case where I've never seen an Excel spreadsheet on, on Facebook? I mean, it's not to say that there can't be. It's probably not the most exciting way to look at information, but. Oh, I would, I'm not understanding if, why you would upload. Yeah. If, you're, if you're thinking, if the, if the question is, is going along the lines of can you upload contacts or something of that nature, you can't do that. Um, one thing that we, shame on us, we didn't do it when we were explaining the page is that there is a back end for the administrators of pages where you can see there's some, I think, demographics and things of that nature that you'll be able to see. So you can tell how many people are, are viewing the page, how many of the people that have liked your page are uh, viewing and liking and commenting on various things that you update. So there are some things you can see, but in terms of uploading, um, you're, you're going to be really restricted. and I don't know why you would want to do that anyway. Okay, take the next question. Is there a book available to use as a guide for added information? Google. I would say, I mean, there's just, there are a vast amount of resources on online. And, I, and you know, I'm sure they're, they're not calling anyone a dummy, but I would almost guess that there's a Facebook for dummies, one of those yellow and black books. So there's, there's lots of resources online. And Anatoly, you might have some that you could recommend. I don't know. I think if you're generally interested in social media, there's, there are a variety of books that are available. If you're, as Ryan says, if you go and search information on the internet, you can get some great information. If you're specifically interested in social media for economic development, I talk about social media in the book Economic Development Online. And you can get that on Amazon.com. Or actually, I'd, I'd encourage you to buy it from uh, the International Economic Development Council's bookstore because all the proceeds from that go to a scholarship to help economic developers get training who are from um, basically at-risk or struggling neighborhoods. What you're going to find is a, a lot of experts. When you Google or, you know, there's books, there's all these people that are experts, and they, they, they've seen a lot of stuff online. But I think it's important that when you're going to people for help, uh, that you look for people that have done it and they've executed um, in the world that you operate in. 
Next question. Other than real estate companies and local companies, who would you suggest that we like to get more people to our page? Liking, if I'm following this correctly, a page has the ability to like another page. Doing that is not a tactic that's going to get people to come back and like your page. Next question is, can you switch from friends to like so that we don't lose all of our friends or have to start all over again? Ooh, there's not a happy answer to that question. No, there's not. Ryan, you want to share the bad news? The, well, the concept, well, I, don't, and I don't know if you know this, you can now switch from a profile to a page. This is a one-time only type deal. Once you switch from profile to a page, um, the name is going to transition exactly as it appears on the profile. But to my understanding, I've not done this just because I, I would never want to be in this situation. But if you have to do this, I think you're going to lose all of the photos. You're going to lose all of the updates. Basically, all that's going to transfer is the friends become likes. And, and that's basically, all, it's going to be starting from scratch virtually with, with the you know, a few likes, whatever it is you, you've built up in terms of friends. Okay. Not, not a pretty situation, though. What are the pros and cons for allowing comments? It's social. I think, and it's, wouldn't you say that would be, the, I mean, the best? Because when people are on social media, it's, you know, it's me talking to you, vice versa, um, interacting with people that you might not know and just having that conversation. The whole point of social media is that it be social. It, Facebook is, I mean, that's what makes it powerful is that you can engage, you can talk with folks, you can really discuss and answer questions. The one-way communication is really dying because people don't like being talked at. So if it's all just updates, if it's only communications from your organization, that's less interesting to an audience than if they can engage with you. So I, I think the pros are is that you maximize the, the power of social media uh, versus you know just trying to turn it back into an old, old school web page or it's like television where it's just pro programming at you. Yeah, and I don't know if this, the person asked this question was going where they were going, but from a comment standpoint, something I've experienced is, is people will say, well, what about the negative comments? Well, that, you're going to get negative comments every now and then. It's not going to be the bulk of what you get, but I, you know, those are all, we're all close to perfect, I know, and I, I'm joking when I say that, but <laughs> it, it, it's sometimes nice when someone gives you that reality check, and it's like, hey, you guys weren't on point on this, and it just, it lets you know the status of, of what people are thinking, and at least if it's an obnoxious comment, at, at least you know what someone's thinking. I mean, and, and there can be benefits to that. So for example, what if you're rolling out a new economic development program or you're thinking about it, or especially if you're in the early stages, why not ask the people who have already said, well, we're interested in your organization, we like your organization, for their feedback? Maybe if the, the feedback is overwhelmingly negative, it may be an indicator. Not that you should necessarily not do it, but maybe you, you've got to do some more searching before you implement it. Okay, next question. How do you differentiate the information or news posted on your website versus on your Facebook page? That's one thing we didn't talk about. <clears throat> Granted, we had 30 minutes. But um, really, the strategy development is something that you have to think about in, you know, okay, we're going to go on Facebook, but what, in terms of content, um, what are we going to post? And a lot of the information that is posted on a website, um, say if you have a, a blog or something defined as a news section, you can repackage or publish, you know, share links on Facebook to the news that's shared on your site. I mean, it's, if it's going on your website, it's marketable material that people would likely like to know about on Facebook. But again, if, it's, you know, if, if you're just putting up a press release, don't just slap a press release on there. I mean, you know, really take the two or three sentences that people are going to care about, and that's what you should share. Yeah, I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with repurposing information. Uh, you can tell the same story many different ways. You could, I mean, the way that you're going to talk about that same press release on your website pro has to be different if you're posting on Twitter. Then it should probably be different based on the people who are fans on Facebook. Yeah, and, you know, I think you, organizations have to remember that websites are very corporate-sounding and very rigid. Social is 
the land where people might, you know, you're using abbreviations, and it's just a more casual language. That also comes out in the tone. If all of your responses sound like they came from a lawyer, people are going to be, it's just less exciting. I mean, which would you rather listen to, you know, kind of people bantering in, the, you know, like the morning drive time on the radio versus somebody giving a lecture. It's just, you know, there, you want to have a certain tone that's friendly and, and typically amusing. I mean, wouldn't you say, Ryan, I mean, people want stuff that's kind of funny or sometimes edgy? Yeah, I mean, when you're, when you're you know, the principal talking and it's all, all people are going to hear, it's going to sound like wah, 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 wah. How do you measure results? It goes back to strategy. I mean, you can, down to, uh, you can measure, um, if you're sharing links, for example, um, or let, let's say an organization has a blog and a, someone writes a blog post on something about uh, the organization or a new business success, then you can post that link on Facebook and then you can see how many people uh, through your web analytics, how many people clicked from Facebook to get to that story on your website. And then you could, of course, measure likes. Um, you, if you're doing like advertising, you could look at conversion rates and things of that nature. But I, I think for most people, the, the likes is going to be a measurement um, but in terms of traditional ROI, that's something that's going to continue to evolve over the years. Yeah, and there are other ways that you could measure. You could measure how many times people post on your wall. You could measure if any of these post results and calls that come into your organization. Just in the same way as if you did some other type of marketing strategy, you want to ask the question, well, how did you hear about us? Or, or All right, the next question is, have you had many inquiries over legal concerns regarding comments? How concerned should an organization be? Uh, for example, First Amendment versus slander and, and misinformation. I have personally not had any that, I have not had that be a concern. Um, yeah, I mean, period. I mean, the people that are typically, I mean, EV organizations are helping positively impact the community. Um, so the amount of slanderous comments or things of that nature that are going to be left, I, I, I would I would love to see some examples of someone's having major issues with something of that nature. I mean, I'm I'm sure that it's going to happen, and sometimes there are sometimes you'll get spammers who will just post whatever they can. But in the the discussions that I've had with economic development organizations, this hasn't been a problem. It's nothing that it's a concern that comes up every time. But then when I ask, you know, I may be giving a talk in a room of, of a couple hundred people and I ask, how many people has this actually been a problem for? You just don't see the hands going up. That being said, the people who are on this call are from different types of organizations. The more private you are, probably the more flexibility you have. If you are a government organization, you may want to check with your, you know, your city attorney or county attorney or state attorney about what, what, you know, what the legal ramifications are. Is social media a fad or a trend? It's not going anywhere for a very, very long time. I don't see it as a fad because fad is something that's going to flame out. But the number of people who are on Facebook makes it, if it was a country, one of the largest countries in the world. I don't think it, it's going to just disappear as, as, a, as an idea. However, as a trend, what it is is a trend in altering communication and engagement. So it's, it's, very, it's a very different type of communication than a newspaper. Well, and one thing to think about, too, is just the, the sheer scale. I mean, we're talking 600 and some million people on Facebook at this point, and it's integrated into so many websites from, you know, Facebook, not to get overly te technical, but they have what's called an, an open graph and, and an API, which means websites can basically utilize Facebook's login information to allow people in and out of websites and to share information. And there's just so much that's integrated now that it's just, I mean, it's, if anything, Evolution is the right word. Okay, the next question. Where can I download the demographic and property search Facebook apps? You can download those at, at facebook.com slash Zoom Prospector. How often should you post on your wall and other organizations' walls? I, I think it's the best practice of, you know, if, if you're actively doing this as an organization, once a day minimum. Um, if, you, if your page goes dormant, um, there might, if a new person goes to your page and then see, sees that, oh, they're not really posting often or anything that I'm really interested in, they're not going to like the page. So I would say, you know, best practice would probably be once a day on a minimum. 
if you're if you have a lot of news and someone managing the, the your you know the social side of your marketing um, that is really taking that voice and giving the page a life of its own, they're going to have more posts. Um, in terms of posting on for, as a page on other organizations' pages, I find that to be terribly ineffective. What everybody should do is experiment, try it out. The way that I've learned the most about social media is by being active on it and trying it out and see what works and what doesn't. Uh, as you're growing your Facebook page, you're going to discover some new insights, and I hope you'll share them with Ryan and me so that, that we can learn and we can share that information too. Well, you know, people will also notice once they start posting or, or paying attention to that if you post at 8 a.m., maybe you have five people that will like or comment on a post versus 3 p.m. you have 10 people. So you can really watch trends. I mean, that's kind of, you know, it's a little nerdy, but I think it's interesting to see what makes people react and, and the types of things that you post. Um, you might start with the plan of saying, well, this is the type of content we're going to post and this is the voice that it's going to have. And over time, you might see that if you say things different ways, that just alters how people behave. And that, that's kind of interesting to watch. Okay, this now concludes the question and answer portion of this webinar. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thanks so much to everyone that attended. Thanks, everybody.